What do you think of when I say the word supper? You're probably thinking something like pot roast, pizza, or pork chops. Maybe a steak and baked potato, grandma's lasagna, or macaroni and cheese. A meal that will fill us up and end the day. But in the 18th century, supper was nothing like what we think of as a modern meal. In a previous episode, we spoke about a working man's breakfast and how that differed from breakfasts today. A working man's breakfast wasn't the giant eggs and bacon kind of breakfast. That was a specialty sort of thing. No, it was just basically a simple oatmeal fills the belly and getting you ready to start working, waiting for that wonderful lunch that was coming along. And speaking of lunch, we talked about the working man's dinner, which is lunch in the 18th century and how that was the important meal of the day. That was the full and big meal, not just a quick sandwich to get you by or a simple meal like we think of as a lunch, but dinner was the big meal. Now that leads us to our working man's supper. And we think of a big meal, but their supper was almost exactly the opposite. We flip it on its head. We need a very, very simple and light meal for our supper time. Something that won't cause problems as we sleep at night. Imagine you're the working man in the 18th century and you get up in the morning, you start off with just a glass of water and you, you get out and do a little bit of work and then you have your breakfast, probably just plain oatmeal. Then you work until that lunchtime. That is dinner in the 18th century and that is the big meal. Then you work all day long and you get home. It's time to relax and have your supper. And it is one of the simplest meals of the day. Maybe it's because everybody's worked all day long and they don't want to spend time cooking. Some of the common meals that they would have for supper would be peas pudding, which probably has already been prepared and it's just waiting around for you. Bread and cheese. You might have oatmeal again for something very, very light. There's also something like seed cake. I, I think that is funny, a cake or apple pie. That's it. So why is supper a light meal? Maybe it's different things for different people, but this particular reading, I think gives us a super hint for that. This is from The Country Housewife. The flesh of pigeons is hard to digest and therefore not judged proper supper meat. It is said to yield a melancholy juice. So there are many things talking about digestion and sleep in the 18th century and how those things go together. And it turns out that they thought a heavy meal was hard to digest and you wouldn't get the kind of rest you needed. So the best thing to have for supper was something very, very light and simple, something that you could easily and quickly digest and then get your proper amount of sleep. Is supper a light meal for every person every time? No, if we are entertaining, yes, then we will have that bigger meal in the evening. And sometimes if we're traveling or in certain circumstances where we couldn't have that bigger meal during the middle of the day, it just wasn't appropriate, then of course it's going to move to the evening. Cresswell, when he is traveling in the back country, they are traveling and they can't stop to cook a big meal. But the time when they make camp is the perfect time to set up for a big meal. So you'll see him talking about supper time and we had turkey or we you know, cooked a turtle or whatever they caught along the way. When they stopped camp, well, their supper time was a big meal. Now we might think this light supper was because of budgetary issues. There wasn't enough money for this poor working family to have a heavy supper, but that isn't necessarily true. Here we have a story about the Duke of Bridgewater and we have a writings about his supper. He says his supper was tarts or hasty pudding, pancakes maybe, or other light food in refusal of flesh. Now why? He's doing this for health reasons. He wants to have a light food on his stomach as he's going to bed. I went digging for all kinds of suppers and I found a very interesting supper here in Benjamin Franklin's autobiography. And he was living the life of a young bachelor, but he had an upstairs neighbor that he was eating supper with. It says, our supper was only a half an anchovy each on a very little strip of bread and butter and a half a pint of ale between us. A very light supper indeed. 
I'm caught off guard many times as I go reading in the 18th century, and I love it. You'll read into something particular topic, and you'll think the obvious common thing is true, and you'll get there and, wait a minute, it's, uh, it's nothing like what I was expecting. So what's a working man's supper like? Something like a seed cake soaked in ale? That's certainly not my idea of a working man's supper, but that's what we're going to make today. The recipe of wigs shows up in multiple 18th century cookbooks. We're going to be digging into William Ellis here because he talks specifically about feeding them at supper time to workmen. He's got three different recipes in here and basically it's the here's how we make them really cheap for our workers, here's how most people make them in their household, and then here's how they're made in the expensive bakehouses of the 18th century. Now, we're gonna be using this sort of middle of the road recipe. We don't wanna make the super cheap ones. And these little rolls or cakes are flavored with caraway seeds. Now, some of them are flavored with something like cinnamon and mace and nutmeg, but the common one, the flavor that really most people are expecting is caraway seeds. If you'd like to make this recipe at home, I will read this out to you as it is in the book. It's a wonderful word problem. Here we go. It says, take half a pint of flour. No, take half a peck of flour and mix it with an eggshell full of caraway seeds and a half a pound of sugar. Then melt 12 ounces of butter into a pint of warm milk, all together into a paste. And after it has lain to ferment and swell, make it into wigs and bake them. So let me help you interpret this recipe. Half a peck, that's going to be a dry gallon or four quarts. Uh, mix it with an eggshell full of caraway seeds. Well, uh, we're gonna use an egg, well, I'm not gonna use an eggshell. Uh, half a pound of sugar, that's easy enough. 12 ounces of butter, warm milk, uh, a pint of ale yeast. And the yeast they have in the time period comes from the brewer, so it's liquid yeast. We can use you know, a packet of yeast, basically. I don't need a million wigs, so I'm gonna cut this recipe down into a quarter size version. The wigs come together pretty quickly and easily. We're gonna take our dry ingredients of the flour, the sugar, the caraway seeds, and mix them all up together. We're gonna melt the butter into the milk. Now we'll pour that into a little hole that we'll make in the middle of our flour combination. Mix that together. Once that's mixed together, I'm gonna to put in our liquid yeast. This is probably the equivalent of a half a packet of yeast in a little bit of warm milk. Mix that gently. This isn't a hard mix. We're not trying to knead this. We want it to just get fully incorporated. And then when that's done, we can lay that out and cut it into these nice bun-sized pieces of dough. These get gently rolled into a little ball. I cut them over the top with the knife. We're gonna let them rest for about a half an hour or so in a warm spot, and then they can go in the oven. They bake for 20 to 25 minutes at a lowish temperature of 325 degrees or so. Supper for us might be a time that we all come together as a family and we have a large meal, a multi-course meal, totally fill ourselves up. But supper was the opposite of that. It was one of the lightest meals of the day. It was one of those meals where we just need enough to fill our stomachs that we won't be hungry in the night. We've made this exactly like the supper that a workman would have. We're gonna have these supped in ale. We can just drop them right in. We don't even have to spend time and have extra quantities of utensils that get dirty. We can just take them right out and then try them out. And let's see what a wig supped in ale is like. You know, they're not too sweet. They're a, a nice little biscuit, a nice little caraway seed. The ale is a wonderful, fun combination with the wig here, and it's ready to go in your stomach, keep you from growling hungry in the night, and perfect for a hard day's work tomorrow.